sometimes. <laughs> How do you like this music? Y'all know Becky Page? She was one of our yeah. teachers here for years. Bells have begun. We're, we're in them. We have a guest speaker actually today. I wanted y'all to hear somebody that I thought was going to be pretty interesting. Uh, this is one of those Owens things that may go really well, may not. I don't know. <laughs> it's it's going to be, I think, interesting. But, uh, you just never know what kind of uh, day you're going to have. You know, these things happen sometimes. And uh, come in, come in. I want y'all to meet somebody that is a former race student. I was outside one day taking pictures of the building site, and he said, Hey, am I going to be in the PI? And I said, I don't know about that, but uh, I think I can probably get you on the school website. Uh, he's a former race student, actually. And uh, we have some other special guests over here. All right, uh, Miss Barbara, would you 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 actually got to meet this gentleman the other day in the hallway? Yes, I did. And um, why don't you just say a word real quick? And this is all raw, okay? It really is. Um, I saw Mr. Owens and this gentleman walking towards me, and I thought, what in the world? And this man approaches me with his hand out and he says, hello, I'm James. And I went, Ellis. <laughs> Ellis. Oh, I've never met this lady before in my life, but uh, I want to start off by saying that uh, her mother was my teacher. Because there's another person there's here that you mentioned by name, and Miss Becky Page is sitting right there. Miss Page? <laughs> Are you still alive? <laughs> Went out of the family came. So you got about 
If I got caught by a kid, we get beat up. I went to the lunch and on Friday was my hamburger day. I would tap you on your right shoulder when you turn around the hamburger was gone. If you say something, pick me up. I was in the office more than I was in my class. Uh, I want to say thank you, please, because I have these use and off the whatever letters that you can think <laughs> I got a book in her class and I opened up the book and it had answers. And I threw, I thought it was somebody else's book, you know, anyway, I copied it and I got a B. Next day, too, she gives some homework and I got a B. Then I got an A plus, then I got a B, and I found file two and two makes four. This page is giving me the answer to these questions. Either she wanna get rid of me, or she's encouraging me to learn something. But I never forgot this page, okay? And I gave all teachers a run for their money. I mean, you turn your head, I done something. I think she remember that. <laughs> but that was Miss Chenoweth, Miss Doreen, uh, Miss Knight. Now let's get to Miss Knight. <laughs> Miss Knight was the type of person that would, when you look at her, it was like World War I. <laughs> I did not want to come in her class and she did not want me in her class. <laughs> and I walked in the class, it would be like, foo 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 Somewhere in between there, there was some kind of word that did not belong there. <laughs> so I took it and uh, I wish I had a translator. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we was in there and something happened that caused a big argument. And I believe right to this day, if that lady would have caught me, she would kill me. <laughs> because that lady got up to me and I said something, she goes, oh, 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 oh. I said, your mama. <laughs> And Mr. Underwood was 10, 20 feet tall. <laughs> I mean, I was just like this. And, I was, and to the office we went because she was trying to catch me. She was running me around back. And I had no choice but to run to Mr. Underwood. <laughs> anyway, I ran into Mr. Underwood and I bet it was good, you know. Anyway, boy, the education I met. I had to run up on uh, all the board. There was. Big Bill Hudson, and Jim and she, the judge, and all of them, they was all celebrating. And well, it goes on and on and on, but uh, there was another incident to where, uh, I don't know if you, you should remember this, Miss Page, but there was a science project called Reptiles and the Pig. And uh, I was specifically told not to bring no critters, no animals to school at all. <laughs> and, this, this is going to fly. They didn't have this report by me. And I had went out in the woods down there, which that was my playground, because I was not allowed to play with the kids, but I find them. So I, in the playground, in the woods, there was a big, long snake called a Western King. Farmers know them as chicken snakes. And I caught this snake, put him in a jar, put a rusty bead on it, and put him in a pillowcase. I went home and I grabbed the encyclopedia. I wrote everything there was about every snake in the United States. And I learned something for the first time. I learned that we only have 12 part of the snakes in the United States. I learned that there's a diamond shaped here that represents part of the snake with a blunt tail. And I came to school. And Mr. William Kenner was my bus driver. He, uh, what did they do on the bus? Right there, as far as you go, that snake fell. You stay back there. <laughs> Kids go to the bus, I had to get off, then I get back on, you know. But I came into school before anybody else did. I went to her class and I raced the whole board. I raced the whole everything, all the whole board. I raced all the <laughs> I peeped once or twice. This thing I know I just do my snakes. I do everything I do. And here comes the teacher. And she looks and she goes, Who did this? Who raced the board? And I had so many kids in the class that did not like me because I don't beat them up with them fall and everything. James Ellis! <laughs> and so, anyway, I had a table set right there with this jar in this pillowcase. And uh, 
I'm up here doing my thing. Y'all give me get an A plus, y'all. For the first time in my school, I think it ended up. That's what I was thinking. It didn't happen. <laughs> but anyway, I'm teaching the class. This is your copperhead. This is your water box. This is your car slash. This is your rattler. See, I knew all that. I've been doing it since 50 years ago. <laughs> so anyway, I pulled the pillowcase off the job. <laughs> And when I did that, everybody went hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> Kids got the money up there. Now, now I'm supposed to have control. Everybody lined up. And I, was, I had it going on, y'all. I, I want y'all to line up. Everybody come around. Don't touch the table. <laughs> no, I didn't have it that way. <laughs> Kids ran up and after all these stuff and went for it. Come up. And James Ray Russell. So it's not that's Archie Russell, but I don't know. <laughs> he had on some things called bifocals. They was that big. <laughs> and his eyes was that big around. <laughs> and he come from out of nowhere and went to see this jar and he touched the jar. And the jar was rocking back and forth. And so I could grab the jar. <laughs> it's on the floor. And matter of fact, this is the same kind of carpet here. There was no shag in it, so it's concrete down in front. And the jar broke. A six foot long chicken snake come out and it's striking in everybody. All the chickens. All the chickens. And I remember one of those out in the administration, the long hallway. They were covered with chickens. They were covered with teachers. And here come the giant, which is Mr. Underwood. I remember Mr. Underwood when he walked, he walked something like. <laughs> Because I done had trouble catching this snake, and now I gotta catch it again. <laughs> and the janitor, he comes out, he had a dust broom. That didn't do no good. <laughs> and Mr. Underwood looked at that me, and I'm. <laughs> he said, You gotta get the snake out of here, Lyle. So anyway, I caught the snake. I had him up like this, and I had his tail over him, his body still turning. You can imagine how small I was and how long this thing was. I go, is that the back of the, back of school up here? It goes to the playground? Well, okay. The playground, what the woods at? That's what we call the yard. If, uh, if Tar Bruce was here, Jeff Marshall, all of them, they'll tell you the same thing. You remember Jeff Marshall? Tar Bruce? <laughs> yeah, okay. So uh, I got to the sliding door with the snake. My idea was the first snake out there now. Kids would know they were gonna be alright. No, that's not the way he should have been to the door. She avoided education and running up at all late at night, whatever it was. And I knew I was gonna get kicked out of school. Good. <laughs> and you see what this night was paid to be. <laughs> but anyway, uh I have a lot of trouble there all because of the way I was raised. Um, it is true when they say that it starts at home. Uh, the way you raise your kids is the way they're going to be when they grow up. As the Bible verse says, what the father does, the child does likewise. So if you mistreat your child, he's going to grow up mistreating another child. There's no love in that. It took me a long time to uh, find Jesus as my Savior. I, uh, I experienced the child abuse from early days. I experienced alcohol, drugs, going to jail. Never went to jail for killing nobody or drugs and breaking in or nothing like that. Just fighting, mostly. Uh, Fighting uh, was a thing that I took a ride in for four and a half years. I didn't have a bad belt. I tried to give to the community. I taught kids with caps, uh, basically discipline. Uh, I think it was Tom Dick the Ninja. Does anybody know him? He stopped me from teaching his karate school. I mean, wow, what in the world? I'm not charging him. You know, I'm teaching him discipline. But half the kids I taught ended up being drug dealers and gangs. Because she stopped me from teaching. Um, and life went on down the line. I said, James, you know, 
You can't do this by yourself. <laughs> Here comes somebody more. Because I was still on the drugs. I tried to fight the drugs. I tried to fight. I went to rehab. I got kicked out of rehab. Got kicked out of rehab. It ain't like they said, get out. Mm -hmm. They told me to leave. Why? Because I had a Bible in my hand every day. They was teaching me that that's a higher power. And I was seeking a higher power. And I said, well, if I can get God in my life, then I can quit drugs. And I don't need rehab. They knew this. So they kicked me out because I had eight or nine other people in there listening to me teach the Bible. I have read the whole Bible while I was incarcerated at the Jail. Okay, I want to go from one thing to the next that quick. I am one of the only persons in Parish, Tennessee that got baptized inside the county jail. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I went to the county jail for, for fighting. And I went in there and I was fighting the police, I was fighting the inmates, I was fighting everybody who said something to me. And I found the Bible. And I said, you know, you couldn't watch TV because everybody watches sports, VH1, <coughs> everything. I wanted to be peaceful. So I grabbed the Bible. And I found myself praying. I found myself reading. And a few days later, I told the editor, the editor, the lock me in the drug tank. Who wants to go to the drug tank and let you go? No, I want to go to the drug tank. <coughs> but my peace of mind and me and God. So I'm in there and I'm praying and I'm reading, I'm praying and I'm reading. And next thing I know, something hits me. I want to get baptized. I got nine months and 29 days of doing jail. I've only been here two months. And I want to get baptized now. And I called the jailer and I says, Lieutenant Dykes, I want to get baptized. You are a criminal. You can't get baptized. So I went to the job. I didn't get mad. I didn't leave. Naturally, I will. But I didn't. And they called me. It was Roger Banks. Anybody here know Roger Banks? You from Church of Christ? <laughs> okay. So I went to Church of Christ before I went to Baptist. <laughs> and I called Roger Banks, and Roger Banks came out there and he says, I'm here to see James Hayes. They said, Well, you might visit me today. You can see James Hayes. He says, That guy wants to get baptized. And I'm here to see James Hayes. Well, the door opened up and they said, James Hayes. What? That's how you talk to me in jail. You talk to the car, you know. He says, Come to the door. So I get up there, and there's two guys I've never seen before in my life. And I'll speak with them if I say anything. And I'll be like, Hell is these people. Anyway, they says, Well, Pastor Banks, no, something, something, something. Good. God answered my prayer. I go to Church of Christ, East Coast Church of Christ, with no orange, no stripes. My civilians, I get baptized on Saturday morning and I get called to the court Tuesday. And I'm thinking, I done did something else. There's a war happening. <laughs> 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 called on God to help me. He got me baptized now. The devil done gave me another talk. <laughs> but I go to court and uh, Hanson calls my name and he says, uh, Mr. Ellis, how you doing? I said, fine, sir. He says, uh, why did you get baptized? I said, yes, I did. He said, if I let you out of jail, what are you going to do? And I said, go to church. <laughs> and I did. And I was released. And I got back to the jail, and old Dyke, and she had a fit. What? James Ellis ain't getting out? Yes, I am, too. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, open these damn doors and let me out. <laughs> but anyway, the struggle, <laughs> the struggle continued because I got out, I went to church, the devil was still with me. I got, they want you to look for new friends. Everybody know when you go to rehab somewhere, look for new friends. Well, here's how it goes. The new friends don't want to hang around you because of your reputation. So the only thing you got is your old friends or you'll be lonely. So I go back to my old friends. Here I am doing the same thing, same thing, same thing, same thing. And if I went through the drug and the uh, alcohol thing for every day until October the 21st, two years ago, so I am alcohol and drug free two years. I sat on my porch on the 19th of October, 
And I'll uh, just get my whole paycheck. Don't do anything else for me. I'm supporting all my friends' habits. But the next morning, I ain't got no friends. No friends. I got it when I got money. That was one message that came to me from the Lord, I guess. Next thing I know, I go down again on the 20th, and I do the same thing. This time, I'm getting money. I'm getting drunk and intoxicated off of her money. Because I don't worry the hell out of her so much. She just throw me money and give him to me. I just get him back at 2 o'clock in the morning. Hey, Tony, yo. Hey, Tony, yo. Hey, boy, I'm going to get out of this town tomorrow. He just gave it to me. I just don't feel good, y'all. It's not a good thing. You know, it's not a good thing. And all this is going through my head. Going through my head. So October 21st come at 7 30, 8 o'clock in the morning. I'm sitting there, she's packing the suitcase. And he's going with her. They going to Pennsylvania, Virginia, where was it? New Jersey. So leave me by myself. They tired of me. And guess what? I'm also tired of me. And I'm trusting God. Y'all think I'm mad at me. I looked up to God and I said, if you don't care nothing about me, kill me now. And something hit me so hard. And remember, I was in rehab twice for NA, which is Narcotic Anonymous. I'm going to the rehab for the wrong thing. I wasn't a, a, a crackhead, pill popper. I was an alcoholic in any moment. Because I started drinking first, and then it leads to drugs. So something hit me so hard, and it said, if you had never bought that beer, thank you, Lord. Back there was my exit. I didn't need no more rehab. I didn't need no more preachers. I didn't need no more churches. All that I need was just what you just got through telling me. And guess what, y'all? I quit drinking. Right there on the spot. And the drugs went away right there on the spot. And I didn't have nothing. I mean, I had a little business. I could put a roof on the house, but I didn't have a hammer. I had a hammer, didn't have a tape measure. Oh, I had nothing because I don't pawn everything. Well, y'all, I have to say that we would go to the store, thrift store, yard sale, and I found myself buying stuff that I never bought before in my life. I'm buying tools, air compressors, nail guns, and I ain't never had no money to buy this kind of stuff before, so where is this stuff coming from? It's coming from God. Because he told me, I got something in store for you. And you have been patient long enough. You have strived, you have tried. Now I went to that baby's church right there. I called her husband at 7 o'clock in the morning. Then I, and I said, I'm coming to your church today, and I'm going to make your church my home. And I got there, and that following Sunday, I was baptized. Again, because I'm a, I'm a believer that repeating is just not good enough. You know, it's just a word that you say out of your mouth. I want to be washed and clean and good. So anytime I start over with the Lord, I want to be buried in the water. So anyway, I uh, own a business now. I own a home. I have a business of all the skills that I know how to do. I even have insurance. Oh, I have trucks, I have cars, and I have a bank account that I never in my life had. So, who do I think? I don't think you, I don't think you, I don't think you. I think nobody but God who gave me a chance to be somebody, to have a life, because he says, I have something in store for you. And the only thing we gotta do is have patience. I talked to the preach, principal the other day, and I told him something, and I'm a believer in this. We do not have control of the thoughts that comes in our mind. We only have control of the decisions and choices that we make after the thought. You see, uh, a person have a thought, go kill somebody. God didn't put that thought in your head. The devil did. It's up to you whether you're going to do it or not. So uh, we're not controlling none of the thoughts that comes in our head. I can say I love you. You know, that comes from God. Because he's 
no one say no. So every time a thought come in my mind, I sit back and I think about it twice. Well, that's a good thought. Let's go to the Lord. So I'll do it. Yeah. Um, I have a piece of paper here. Um, after the principal asked me to uh, speak, you know what he wanted me to say. I didn't know what he wanted me to do. I don't even know why he asked me to do it. But this piece of paper here is the reason why I'm here. Okay? And the title of it is called Footprint. And I'm pretty sure a lot of y'all have read it before. Okay? One night a man had a dream. He dreamed he was walking along the beach with the Lord. Across God flashed scenes from his life. But each scene he noticed two set of footprints in the sand. One belonging to him and the other to the Lord. When the last scene of his life flashed before him, he looked back at the first footprint in the sand and he noticed that many times along the path of his life, there was only one set of footprints. He also noticed that it happened at the very lowest and saddest times in his life. This really bothered him, and he questioned the Lord about it. Lord, yea, he said, that once I decided to follow you, you walked with me all the way. But I have noticed that during the most troublesome times of my life, there are only one set of footprints. I don't understand why, when I needed you the most, you leave me. The Lord replied, my son, my precious child, I love you and remember you. During your times of trials and sufferings, when you only see one set of footprints, it was then that I was carrying you. And that hit me so hard because of my life. When I was a child coming up, being child abused, being hated, not loved, coming up during my life, being introduced to the drugs, alcohol, stealing and stuff, and now, God carried me. And this is why I am not ashamed to get up here today and talk to you. I did not know what I was going to say. I didn't know where I was going to start. Um, I want to say one thing. I want to thank you, God, and thank you all for coming and hearing me. Thank you. That was me. 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 That was me
Oh, yeah, you the fool. I said, I said, hi, this is James Dennis, man. I'm free speaking this page, and you answered the phone. And I said, this page, this is James Dennis. Do you remember me? You said, yes. I said, I want to thank you. You said, okay. <laughs> This page of Miss Knight is the main two. Uh, I, I can remember Miss Chinnawarp, I can remember Miss Nelson, um, Miss Betty Hill, Miss Hagler. Um, there was a couple more um, that I can remember, but not exactly, but them two teachers. Well, I'm going to tell you, if my mom was here, she would lovingly give you I bet you might have said, well, I got you now. <laughs> she was in the office a while ago, and uh, I, uh, I, I have a real good memory about things. I don't know, God did not let the drugs and alcohol affect me too much. I still have my health. Um, but I went to the office one time, and she took me to the office, and uh, I was sitting there and I was looking at Mr. Underwood, you know, you know how kids are. They got their attitude, they got their towel on their face, you know, they looking all around. <laughs> and they look at the teacher, and they look worse when they look at the teacher at the <laughs> Anyway, I, I, was I was talking to him, and I was cutting my eyes at her, and I swear I saw Miss Knight. <laughs> If the principal wasn't in, I think she would have beat me right there again. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We don't know what impact we're going to have. We really don't, especially with children our age, the small. They, a lot of people have issues. We don't know what they are. Best we can do is love them and care for them and do everything we can to try to understand. And then I think said a minute ago to have patience. You have to have patience with the Lord. A lot of things He's are not on our time frame. It's never late. He's on time, God. Uh, we try to rush. You know, we think, I'm going to go to church to get baptized, and I'm a Christian. <laughs> oh, no. We're not a Christian right now. We don't work out that. The devil does not want to release you. You are one of his soldiers from the time you are born in this world. This belongs to him. And you can sit there and have good parents all you want. You can have Christian parents all you want. You are not a Christian until God accepts you and you accept God. And that means you have to surrender. And the only way that you're going to be a Christian is Christ like. You got to think like Christ. We are not perfect, and we're never going to be like Christ. But we have to try to think like him anyway. We all know right from wrong. We know that thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not do. But these are the things that Christ did in life. You know? So we have to understand that in order to be a Christian, we need to try. You know, try to live a life of Christianity. And man, you'll be, it, it's going to hit you so hard because the things that never happened to you but you in your life happen. And you and the people that never walked up and gave you the time of the day will be glad to shake your head and say, How are you doing? <laughs> okay? I have met them, I have met them and don't even know who they are. We just sit there and talk about everything. And I say to myself, <coughs> I don't even really see. But you know what I do when I do that? I say, thank you, God. So, this is the best. Uh, this, I, I, I'm going to say this, then, I, uh, then I, I'll leave it back at the end. I didn't know how I was going to feel when I walked in here and seen all these people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know none of y'all, really. I know uh, I've seen that lady face before and that lady back there. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's uh, her husband is uh, Pastor Paul, uh, Ted, or uh, what is it? Pastor David. David, yes, I know her. But what it took converting off of me, and what it says, you're going to be all right until I saw this one. I'm glad to see.
who you are, and uh, I hope some other kids someday uh, have this opportunity to have a changed life and to let you know that they made it. They made it. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of kids who were abused, they, uh, they didn't make it. You know, they, uh, they didn't find love from nobody else. They started making cho choices of their own. A lot of them go in gangs, get killed early, go to prison. Um, that's how I knew that God was good to me. Because I never went down that road. And I knew that, you know, something was going to go, something, something had to be up, you know. So I'm just, uh, this page, I also have something that's pretty young to knock you out, cool. I got my GED in my company. <laughs> Bill Hudson was not living in Harry County High School. <laughs> I uh, also went to Grove Junior High School and uh, took the problems here, 50 years old. So I got over there and then, not Miss Nightingale, Miss Phoenix. Oh, Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't stand that lady with a passion. <laughs> Headed her so bad, I dumped the wig off my head. <laughs> <laughs> I took the wig off Miss Bennett's head and threw it in Squeaky Patterson's arms. She beat him half to death, and she found out I was the one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she, had a, she had a study hall class, and I was walking down the hall. It was like, she says, like that. I didn't even go in her class, I used to go walk and I said, I knew it was going to be a fight. Uh, that was uh, Luke Wells. Um, also, hit Mr. Crump. Does anybody know Mr. Crump? No. <laughs> 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 I knocked him over the ass. He used to have a habit of grabbing you by your pants, man. He patterned you. He'd grab you right there and tighten your pants up. And I had to take five days. I'm going to take the legs because my mom was there. You ain't gonna grab my pants. <laughs> <laughs> well, that ain't really good. He gave me four days and then on the back and grab my pants and I raised up. And when I raised up, he said, Call the back with the paddle. Uh -huh. um, yeah, <laughs> this is the one you don't want to meet. So I gave him across my back. Bam, mm -hmm. over this he went. And he screamed like a woman. <laughs> 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 do it, then I'm not going to support it. I'm not going back in life, so don't bring it to me. Don't offer it to me. Don't even come in my yard with it. I do not want to go back to jail unless it's for my life 
But if you come to my house with an alcohol, dope, or anything like that, I'm going to jail because I'm going to knock something out of you. <laughs> You're not going to be able to get high no more because I love me and I love what the Lord has done for me. And I believe to this day that, and I, and I, I want to mention this to you too. I want to, I have to say this. I can say and talk to you all day long. Right? <laughs> but I'm a firm believer that the God give it. Now, I want somebody to raise their hand here. Who all believes in here that God gives and God takes away? Come on. Come on. Come on. Let me see. God gives and God takes away. Everybody here believe in something. But I don't. I'm going to tell you. I don't. Did y'all see God being a wound giver, giving you a blessing and come back how I want it back? Come on, man. Now, listen, look where I'm coming from. God give it. He will not take it away. If he gives you a blessing to an angel, that angel is not going to come back the next day and say, I want it back. So let's go to the real deal here. God gives it, and the devil takes it away. Okay? And here is my example. An angel came and knocked at a person's door with a check. And don't nobody know where the check came from. It was $500. She had no friends. But all of a sudden, everybody found out that she got $500. Hey, girl. <laughs> you know, I'm your best friend. I've been knowing you all my life. I've been watching you Now, you are a kind of hard person, okay? So you can take up somebody else. Take up somebody else. Take up somebody else. And then all of a sudden, the blessing that the angel gave you is gold. Who took it from you? Your no good friends who wasn't your friend, God gave it and the devil took it. So I don't believe God will give you anything and come back and take it from you. I just don't. My beliefs are different. I was talking to him about church. And I think he wanted me to finish the message. <laughs> I don't believe that a, a church is a place to be saved. I believe the church is a place to gather and worship, but not to be saved. I believe once you receive Jesus Christ in your life, your <laughs> body is the church. Because you it got him in you. So he will not lead you wrong. When you pray and you ask God to lead you down these roads, okay, God got you by the hand. Okay? You over here. <laughs> God got you by the hand. Here go the devil trying to pull you that way. What is God going to do? He's going to pull you back. So if you ask God to lead you down the right road, he's in you. He's not going to let you go down that road. He's not going to let that happen to you. So I believe your body is the church once you receive Jesus Christ in you. So my belief, and a lot of people say, I do not think that Brother Ed is this and Brother Ed is that. Uh, he's, he's, he's going down the road. I've been hearing preachers tell me that too. Because they say, well, you need to go to church and you need to do this, you know. Well, I done did all of that and I didn't get nowhere. So I'm going down the road now with God and with Jesus. Uh, I love Christians <coughs> and I love sinners because I want to try to help them. But I believe that when I go to God, I got to go for myself. I can't go for nobody else. I got to go up there and say, Your Honor, uh, God, sir, I did what you want me to do. I tried. So that's why I believe the way I believe. So I can sit here and talk and talk, and I love to see y'all smile. I can go on and on. But anyway, I love y'all. Thank you. Yes. you can. I'll let you come to your own conclusions. And we might talk a little more at some point in time to see and what can we do with children that are coming from that background that he did. Is there anything we can do? But that's another topic. You know, because I know you tried. <laughs> and some others tried. What do you do? And that's no. Well, if this, case, if this page gave me the answers to get rid of me, because 
She does that, and I still learn something. But if she gave me the whole, I think she gave me, in my heart, I feel that she gave me the whole one so that she can find me to try to learn to do that. That's how I, I remember her. Miss Nang on the other hand, I think she'd have caught me in that classroom. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have a great night. Appreciate all of you. Thank you.